of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John did baptize in the wilderness, and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea, and they of Jerusalem, and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was clothed with camel's hair, and with a girdle of a skin about his loins. And he did eat locusts and wild honey, and preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John. you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little further thence, he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets, and straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. They were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had taught not as the scribe. There was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, about Galilee. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and anon they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. And at even, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of divers diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. And he said unto them, let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also, for therefore came I forth. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee, and cast out devils. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. 
And Jesus, moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him, and saith unto him, I will, be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And he straightly charged him, and forthwith sent him away, and saith unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But he went out and began to publish it much and to blaze abroad the matter, so much that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in desert places. And they came to him from every quarter. Chapter 2. And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there, and reasoning in their hearts, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed, and walk, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. And he went forth again by the seaside, and all the multitude resorted unto him, and he taught them. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of custom, and said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast. And they come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but thy disciples fast not? And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. No man also soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment, else the new piece that filled it up taketh away from the old, and the rent is made worse. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine doth burst the bottles, and the wine is spilled, and the bottles will be marred. But new wine must be put into new bottles. And it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day. And his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of corn. And the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? And he said unto them, Have ye never read what David did when he had need and was an hungered? He and they that were with him. How he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar the high priest, and did eat the showbread, which is not lawful to eat but for the priests and gave also to them which were with him. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen.
we know that you are going to bless your people tonight. Lord, I pray there will be no exception tonight. Young and old, men and women, leaders and members, invitees and those who have been coming before, do something new in every life in Jesus' name. Wipe all the tears away. Take all the problems away. Everything we've had you are going to do. Do everything for everyone in Jesus' name. Break the backbone of their enemy. Destroy the works of the devil. Take every incurable disease away. Put their feet on victory ground tonight. Saints. And David was greatly distressed. this truth? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue. Tonight, pursue. You will overtake them. You will recover everything. But thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Thought you say amen. amen. Recovery what we have lost brings joy, brings new life. When you recover what you have lost, it brings a new drive in your life, a new determination. If I got this, I'm going to get more. It brings a sense of fulfillment and a source of inner strength brings courage to begin life all over again. And you understand that abundant life is going to begin afresh. I just said to you about David and his men. They lost everything that was precious to them. That brought sorrow, brought distress, emptiness, discouragement came their disorientation. There was inner turmoil and there was total exhaustion. But then, just wishing, I wish I would have all, that doesn't solve the problem. David went to God in prayer and he said, Lord, look at my circumstance. Look at my situation. What do I do now? Should I pursue them? If I pursue them, will I overtake them? If I overtake them, will I recover everything from the least to the greatest? And God answered. God is going to answer you tonight. And he said, pursue one. Then he said, you will overtake them too. And then three, you will recover all. Understand? 
He didn't fold the sand. The unthinkable has happened. The terrible has happened. What can we do now? We're helpless. We're hopeless. They're taking everything away. No. He said, I have a God in heaven. I will talk to that God in heaven. Whatever is happening to you tonight, whatever has happened to you before tonight, we have a God in heaven. We're going to talk to that God on your behalf. This thing you have lost must come back. Your blessing must come back. The totality of everything that has gone out of your life, everything must flow back into your life in Jesus' name. No part of your life, no part of your family, no part of your possession will be in the hands of the enemy. And tonight is your night. Don't look now, I want to catch your face there. I said, tonight is your night. A night of total recovery. Where are you? Where are you? A night of total recovery. You have cried enough. You have been sorrowful enough. The times of dejection and the times of regret. Why am I here in life? That is enough. Not everything is going to turn around. Joy has come. Latter has come. Abundance has come. David prayed. David pursued. David prevailed. And David recovered all. I'm talking about you tonight. You are that David tonight. As you pray, as I pray, an explosion will take place in your life. The dynamite of heaven, the bulldozer from heaven, the caterpillar that will take all that mountain away, that thing is going to clear away. I said that thing is going to clear away. Because as we pray, we're going to prevail tonight. And everything lost in your life, in your family, in your business, your Christian experience, you got it tonight. I'm reading from Second Kings chapter 5. Second Kings chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 1. Second Kings chapter 5, verse 1. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria he was also a mighty man in valor but 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 he was a leper all the victories became nothing all the triumph became nothing look at the man riches Wealth, popularity, national position, national whatever, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel, a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord, my master, what was the prophet that is in Samaria? Would God, I wish that my master will get to the prophet in Samaria. Ah, I wish you get to the prophet in Bagada. I said, I wish you get to the prophet in Bagada. Are you there today? Where are you today? Ah, recovery has come. I said recovery has come. 
in verse 3 for he would recover him of his leprosy incurable disease will vanish away that mountain of a problem mountain of a sickness will vanish away tonight in jesus name leprosy will vanish away cancer will vanish away blindness will vanish away that hunchback will vanish away tonight and all those problems have been carrying about and it's a reproach a reproach a reproach upon your life tonight everything will vanish away in jesus name look at verse 4 and one went in and told this lord saying thus and thus said the maid that is in the land of israel and then it goes on to say and the king of syria said go to go i will send a letter unto the king of israel and he departed and he took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment and he brought the letter to the king of israel saying now when the letter when this letter is come to you behold i have there with saint Naaman, my servant to thee that's to the king that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy did they send him to the king or to the prophet let me hear you and then he went to who he made a mistake but all the same you see at the end of the story that mistake was nullified whatever mistake you have made and you go this way instead of going this way you are still coming back to the place you ought to be recovery will come to you tonight in jesus name verse 7 and it came to pass when the king of israel read the letter that he read his clothes and said am i god to kill and to make alive that this man does send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy wherefore consider i pray you and see how he seeketh a quarrel with me the scene almost turned to another war but there's no war i said there's no war you led your place and you came to samaria i thank god the problem is solved i said you left your place and you came here tonight what are you are you there the problem is solved verse 8 and it was so when elisha the man of god had heard that the king of israel had rent his clothes that he said to the king saying wherefore as thou rent thy clothes let him come now to me and ye shall know somebody there tonight will know and he shall know that there is a prophet in israel so naaman came with his horses big man vip and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of elisha and elisha sent a messenger unto him saying go and wash in jordan tell me seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean and thou shalt be clean but Naaman was wrath, angry and went away and said behold i thought it's not what you think i said it's not what you think i thought they'll rub oil on me no problem i thought they would lay hands on me no problem 
and you find somebody there that is angry, no problem. After the anger, the miracle will come. Yeah. It's having wrong thought. I thought this is what they will do. And then he said, let's go back home. No, you are not going back home without recovery. Yeah. You must get it tonight. Yeah. And then he said, I thought it will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of his of the name of the Lord is God and strike his hand over that place and recover the leper and not a banner and papa don't mind all the arguments after all the arguments miracle will come don't mind all the wrong reasoning after the wrong reasoning miracle will come don't mind the thought that is going on in your mind. How about this? How about that? Don't mind all that. After all those thoughts that is uh, struggling in your mind, your miracle will come. Yeah. And not a banner and far rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel. May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. That doesn't cancel the solution. The solution is coming. I said the solution is coming. I look at you tonight. Whatever you do, whether you stand up or you sit down or you put your head on the ground or you put your legs up, tonight, tonight, you will not live here without a miracle. Tonight is the night of your recovery. All those problems are going to be wiped away tonight. And whatever happens, and whatever does not happen, whatever you do, whatever you don't do, before you go out of that gate today, miracle upon your life. Look at verse 13. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldest thou not have done it? How much more rather than when he says to thee, wash and be clean, then this then will happen in your life. Then went he down and did himself, tell me, seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again. Are you seeing the house? And his flesh came again. Like unto the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. And he was clean. And you are clean. And you are healed. Naaman was an incredible leper. Seek ashamed, despised, depressed, unhappy, he needed total recovery. He did not waste away in idle inaction. He took the journey after he heard. He acted on the information. He sought divine remedy. He corrected his wrong attitude, his wrong thinking, and eventually he obeyed and he had total recovery. Tell the person by your side, that's my story. I have it tonight. I have it tonight. Remedy, recovery, total healing, deliverance has come upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. Tonight I'm talking to you on the spiritual dynamics of total recovery. The spiritual dynamics of total recovery. There's, a, there's dynamics in this. There is a kind of kinetics in this. There, there's some kind of movement. You know, this happens, that happens, and that happens. Dynamics in your life tonight, and it's going to happen. Number one, the promise of total recovery from all sicknesses. The promise of total recovery from all sicknesses. Point number two, the pursuit of total recovery of lost strength. The pursuit of total recovery 
of lost strength the energy you have lost thank god you're going to regain it today something new is coming tonight life is coming tonight power is coming tonight the pursuit of total recovery of lost strength number three the prayer somebody help me shout the prayer are you there i said shout the prayer. prayer the prayer for total recovery by every supplicant every supplicant that is somebody making supplication somebody making petition somebody saying i will not live here today until this miracle happens are you hearing me i will not live here today until this recovery has taken place thank god it will not be long it will come upon your life the prayer for total recovery by every supplicant number one the promise god has given you a promise i said god has given you a promise of total recovery from all sicknesses look at those sicknesses tonight you will not see them anymore after this meeting exodus 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 chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 26 and said if thou will diligently hack into the voice of the lord your god somebody there tonight is hearing the voice of god and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandment and keep all the statutes i will put none of these diseases upon thee which are brought upon the egyptians every form of sickness you hear about anybody in the world in egypt will not come upon you any sickness there ask yourself is there an egyptian somewhere there that has this if you discover it is belonging to the egyptian you are not an egyptian you are the israel of god you say pack your load and go you didn't say it you just said amen <laughs> pack your load and go and then god said in verse uh, in the latter part there for i am the lord that he lets thee do you see present tense two times there i am i am i am and that great i am that i am has not changed and he said that he lets thee that means tonight is going to happen i said it's going to happen psalm 103 psalm 103 i read it from verse 1 psalm 103 and we're reading from verse 1 here he tells us psalm 103 reading from verse 1 bless the lord Oh my soul others have been praising the lord it's now your turn you'll praise the lord others have been singing it's now your turn you will sing others have been giving testimony now it's your turn you will give testimony bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord oh my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgives how many iniquities who forgives how many iniquities all thine iniquities all thine iniquities where is the person the lord is talking to you all those uh, condemnations everything will vanish away tonight and then look at the next part there who healers tell me who healers make it personal now who healeth all my diseases look at verse 4 who redeemeth thy life from destruction ah you're free i said you're free who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies who satisfies thy mouth Whose mouth? I said whose mouth? 
who satisfies thy mouth with good things. Ah, evil will pass you by. Yokes will pass you by. Causes will pass you by. Calamity will pass you by. All those powers of darkness, as they came, they will go tonight. So that the youth is renewed like the eagles. Your youth renewed like the eagles. I'm looking at Jeremiah chapter 33. Jeremiah chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee. Any answer tonight? Any miracle tonight? Any healing tonight? Any provision from heaven tonight? Call upon me, call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee. And show thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. You will see what you have never seen. You will experience what you have never experienced. I have seen, I'm a Christian, I'm born again. I got this, I got this. Pastor, I gave testimony in my district. Did they tell you, I gave testimony such and such a time. That one, praise the Lord for that one. That one is initial testimony. Something is coming on top. I said something is coming on top. It will show you things you have never known. Look at verse 6. Look at verse 6. Behold, I will bring it health and kill. I will kill them. On my right hand side, I will kill them. In front of me there, I will kill them. I will kill them. There on top, I will kill them. You are killed tonight. You are healed tonight. And then, look at this, look at this. And I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Every commotion in your life, everything will pass away. Confusion in your life, everything will pass away. Tonight, you recover. I recover. I recover. I recover. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Past tense or present tense? Yesterday or today? In the morning or this night, this hour? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind and to search at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord and he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogues were fasting on him and he began to say unto them read it yourself Read it for yourself, personally. This day, the day of recovery, this day, the day of answered prayer, this day, the day of miracle, this day, this day is this scripture fulfilled where? Put your hand there, put your hand there. Fulfilled where? Tonight is your night. Point number two now. The pursuit. Somebody there tonight will pursue. 
you will catch what you are looking for. You will catch what you are expecting. The pursuit of total recovery of lost strength. Lost strength. If you are, if you are tired now, when you recover tonight, you will be strong. If you are weak now, when you recover tonight, that mighty dynamite from heaven will come inside your body. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. I'm reading from verse 28. Has thou not known, you will know. Has thou not heard, you will hear. That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, Faintest not, neither is weary. There is no such in of his understanding. He gives, he gives, he gives. The doors of heaven are opened upon you, the windows of heaven are opened upon you. He's giving you something right now. Something is coming upon your life right now. Power is entering your life right now. He giveth power to the faith. And to them that have no might, he gives us strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But, but, they that wait upon the Lord, shall renew their strength. Renewal. I say renewal. You are renewed tonight. All those dead cells inside your body will come alive. The cells are dead in the eyes. That's why you are getting blind and you cannot see very well. Those cells will come alive tonight in Jesus' name. When I sit down, I cannot stand up. When I stand up, I find it difficult to sit down. There's pain at the back. There's pain in the throat. There's pain in the head. Something is moving here. Something is moving there. That thing is swept away. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I rejoice with you tonight. Your strength is renewed. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. No mountain will hinder your progress. You stay too long in the valley and they tied you down there and you'll be crying there. Doing some merry go round there. I don't know what to do again. There is nothing to do tonight as settle the whole matter. They shall mount up. I will mount up. I said, I will mount up. You will mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall run and not be weary. You will test it tonight when we go out after the meeting. Because before, if you walk a few, a few steps, you are looking for something to hold and sit down. And then you get up and walk a few steps again. And you're looking for something. And it's like, you know, your eyes are turning. I'm going to fall. Hold me, hold me. You will hold other people tonight. Tonight, you will run. I said, tonight, you will run. All those debilitating things and the weakness things in your life, they are swept away tonight in Jesus' name. And they shall walk and they shall not fade. They shall walk and they shall not fade. Look at Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah chapter 35. It says, strengthen ye the weak hands. Confirm the feeble knees and say to them that of the fearful heart, be strong. What 
is heaven saying to you? What's the Almighty God saying to you? What Jesus, your healer, your deliverer, your redeemer, was he saying to you? What are the angels of God saying to you? What is heaven declaring to you tonight? Be strong. You are going to be strong. Weakness will vanish away. Pains will vanish away. Impossibilities will vanish away. Be strong. Fear not. Behold, your God will come. Did you hear that one? Your God will come. With vengeance, even God, with a recompense. He will come and deliver you. He will come and set you free. He will come and break your soul. He will come and comfort your soul. Then, look at verse 5. The eyes of the blind shall be opened. Ah, tonight, tonight, if your eyes are dim, what happened to you? You have some bruises. I didn't see the pitch. I was just walking and I fell. That dimness of sight will vanish away tonight. You will see your eyes will be bright. It says, the eyes of the blind shall be opened. The ears of the dead shall be unstopped. Then, verse 6, Then, then, shall the lame man leap as a patch, and the tongue of the dumb shall see. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in your desert. The patch ground shall become a pool. The thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of dragons, where each lay shall the grass with reeds, shall be grass with reeds and rushes. And an highway shall be paved, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. Your clay shall not pass over it. The way fearing men, no fools shall not air bearing. No lion shall be there. No lion will be your way anymore. Nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not come, it shall not be found there. But the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return.